Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Shadow the Colossus with me, Oksu. And you know the drill, we just beat this guy, the sandworm, and... Well, I was... I don't know. It was a lot easier than what, what, I, what I'd come to expect from him, but that was mostly because I finally understood how to control aggro <laughs> on the horse. Don't have to keep pressing X every time. You don't have to keep him galloping. I don't know why I thought it was like sprinting in GTA 4. <laughs> but anyway, our next foe. Our next foe is... An, outer over, an altar overlooks the lake. A guardian sets loose, it keeps the flames alive. Anything else? Nothing else? Okay. Well, I wonder what that flame spit is about. It couldn't be anything important. Oh, I keep, <laughs> I keep moving the thumbsticks while I'm in the cutscene, and I forget that you can move around the cutscene with that. And of course, very first thing that we have to do... Ah! I don't know why it keeps switching back. Whatever. There we go. Yeah, there we yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot better with that. Now let's go get that guy. Now this guy that we're going to be fighting right now is the tiger. And, well, I won't say too much about him right now. Except that he's a tiger. Arr. Not... We're not going to fight Tiger Woods or something like that, but... <laughs> the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. Their tops are made out of rubber. Their bones are made out of string. They're bouncy, trancy, fancy, fancy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is that this is the only one. <laughs> Actually, no. There's another Colossus that is quite similar to this guy, but a bit more difficult, so I hear. Yes, uh, by the way, this is the last Colossus that I've actually beaten... So, the rest of this Let's Play after this episode will be... will be blind. Well, sort of blind. I've gotten as far as to the next Colossus, but I've never beaten him. So, it'll be interesting. But as far as the way we have to go, it's this way. Which I remember because this guy's... This guy's... This guy's fun. This guy's pretty fun. Just because he's not what you expect. But yeah, that Tigger song... What was it that we did with that? Um, no. <laughs> uh, no, we actually... Um, me and my girlfriend were joking around one one day. Made a version of that um, for Worf from Star Trek. The most wonderful thing about Klingons. Our Klingons are wonderful things. Our tops are made of rubber. Our bottoms are made out of strings. Our trouncy, flouncy, trouncy, pouncy. Fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Klingons is that I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, Michael Dorn. You and your ridges. <laughs> but then again, you are the only reason that I watched Deep Space Nine, so... That and it was on. And it's Star Trek, so... I mean... I'm not the biggest Star Trek nerd, not like my girlfriend is. I did grow up with... I did grow up with Star Wars, so... That holds a more dear place in my heart. But I, I grew up with Next Generation, too. That was that was my parents' thing. Let's see if we can find some fruit first before we keep going. I think... Yep, there we go. There's some... There's some peaches. Well, how does that go? Really love you peaches, wanna shake your tree... I can't remember how that song goes. You know, by, um... Steve Miller Band. Because I'm a baker. I'm a poker. I'm a midnight toker. Get my love in on the run. I can't remember the words right now. <laughs> oh well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Now where is this lake that he told us about? Ah, here we go. Ah, here we're now. Here we are. Let's not fall down. <laughs> that would be a bit catastrophic, now wouldn't it? Let's go through the arch. Why not? Epicness or something like that. I don't know. As far as epicness goes, this is the right game to go to. <laughs> did I set everything up right? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> Just had to check that quick. Uh, don't want to re-record this video, but 
but I started re-recording and this would be the time to go. Everything's running, video capture's going, fans off, my room's heating up because I think I've already ran to, you about, to, to you guys about that. My room's the most awkwardly placed one in my house and just doesn't get much airflow. So it ends up heating up to like 90 degrees or more when the rest of the house is somewhere around 80. <laughs> so it's like coming out of an oven when I go when I go to the rest of the house. Get our sword ready, why not? Oh no, you swim you swim slower when we have our sword, don't you? Well, you swim slower in, in any case. I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm worried about. It's not like we're going to get there any quicker. No, but I, I don't know. I, I just can't believe that the semester is over for me. It, it's... I guess once I start hanging out with friends and actually have some time to do stuff rather than just lollygagging around the house and be like, uh, I don't have to get up. I guess, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll start to realize that, oh, hey, the summer actually is over. And I don't think we have to go over there. But I mean, not the summer is over. School actually is over. <laughs> Then I'll start actually working on my projects. Website design! And working on that panel for Magical Matica. And. Oh, oh, I don't think I told you guys about this. I am planning a ROM hack for Pokemon. Which, yeah, I know that's, a, that's not a normal thing, but it's not. I mean, what am I talking about? That's not an impressive thing, because everybody. Oh, do we have to get, grab on there? Because everybody does it. Everybody makes their own little ROM hack where you can catch the legendaries right in the beginning of the game, or you can get uh, Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur out in the wild or whatnot. But you know what? I'm not doing it for that. I'm not doing it to make it a cooler game. I'm doing it to make a story for it. Because, I don't know, ever, ever since I was, like, a little kid, like an eight-year-old, watching... Oh, there we go. I'll continue this in a second because we are about to find out our Colossus. This guy. The tiger. Rhino. Elephant. Thing. <laughs> so, just dodge out of the way because he'll smash you and then he'll come up and knock you off. Damn it. Come on, come on, get up. Get up, Prince. Get up, Prince. Roll that, Katamari. <laughs> Wrong game. Oh well. So we have to make that jump again. Uh, lovely. <laughs> but no, um, ever since I was ever since I was like eight, when the anime started playing and I started playing the games and such, uh, I've always I've always been like, oh, it would be cool to do this with Pokemon. I've got stories to tell. So that's what I'm doing with it. That's that's pretty much it. I want to tell stories. I want to write creatively. Because that's some of the funnest, the funnest stuff to do for me. All right, so, well, this isn't helpful because. Oh, there we go. So basically, what you want to do is get him to ram into these things, and he'll knock off a torch, which you're gonna want to not get hit by him. But you're gonna want to go over and get those torches because well, I'll show you in a second if we can get up and not get hit. Damn it. The only problem with this boss is that he'll ram you pretty much as soon as you get up, so you're screwed if he starts really ramming you, because eventually you're going to get knocked off of one side. So what I'm going to actually do is screw that torch, I'm going for this one. Good, knock me into that little, that little alcove. Which means we can get him to knock into this. Knock down another torch. Basically, it's like Shere Khan from the Jungle Book. You get the... You get the torch, you wave it in his face, and he's afraid of it. Then you attach it to his tail, and he starts freaking out, and lightning comes and strikes, and you have the beetles acting as vultures, being like, Hey, what do you want to do today? I don't know. What do you want to do today? Oh, no, don't say, no, I don't say that again. No, I asked you first. And all that jazz. <laughs> Alright, so basically, go and get the torch, and it's not lit anymore. So, jump up here. And... Yep, there you go. Relight it. And he'll start freaking out, be like, oh my god, it's fire! Oh my god, it's man! 
Just don't get too close, because as you saw, might have seen, he'll swipe at you, knock you, knock you flying, then you're then you're screwed again, because you'll never get anywhere. Basically, what we want to do is we want to back, keep backing him up. Keep backing him up. Because as you'll see, there's a ledge behind him. It might just be important to get him over that ledge. But we'll see. Because as you can see, there's kind of a little bit of an armor uh, of an armor plating covering him right now. So when he falls, he knocks on his back, and there goes his armor. So now we can actually attack him. Yeah, no. Part of my favorite part of my favorite part about this guy is just how small he is. It's just so different than all the other guys. And let's go for it. Let's see if we can make that jump right on top of him. Almost. Oh well. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's hard to get on this guy other um once he starts charging at you and such. I don't think we can call aggro down here, so. Uh let's go back up. See if we can get, can jump at him. Nope, nope. He's gonna smash us. Oh well. I guess we'll just have to go up and see if we can jump on him from up top again. No, nope, we're gonna get smashed again. And this is what he'll start doing. He'll start ramming us as soon as we get up, or even before we get up. So we're gonna we're, we might get screwed a little. Nope, he's still up here with us. So basically what I'll try to do is use the rock outcropping as his cover while we try to get around him. I think what I'll usually end up doing is bringing him back up here and jumping on him from up top one of the, uh... <laughs> I'll, try to I'll try to bring him around here and then I'll try to jump on him from on top of one of the ledges. Or something like that. I can't remember. Because this guy actually... The fun part is not his knocking him back with uh, the fire. And then once you actually get him down, just bucking on top of him. Because it's like kind of like your guy's just riding a bucking bronco, which is, is fun. But <laughs> getting on top of him proves kind of a challenge. Especially because he keeps doing this. You don't get like you, you only get like half a second to actually get up. At least he doesn't do like a quarter of your health of damage whenever he rams into you like the other guys would be doing. With their little lightning blasts and such. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Gotta make better commentary like that than this. But yeah, guys, soon this Let's Play will be over. So, if you want to guess what my next one's going to be, go ahead and guess. Because I, I, already, I already know what, what, what my next game is going to be that I'm going to Let's Play. And it's going to be, it's going to be something, it's going to be something fun. It's going to be something pretty fun. And... Maybe if we shoot him with the... Well, maybe if we don't get freaking hit. Well, there we go. That was useless. <laughs> that was easy. Looks like I might have to cut this thing into two. He keeps doing this. <sighs> it's like we're in Matador and we keep... We keep failing at our job or something like that. Where did you got out of I gotta make more better because <laughs> this is such crap commentary now. Oh, is that how we have to get up on him? Like just get behind him and let's try. Oh, okay, that didn't do anything. Okay, that might be how we have to get up on top of him by waiting until he does a little jump like that and then just jumping on his back. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on, come on, do a little buck, do a little buck, do a little buck. 